Hey modelers, my name is Steve Story. I'm with the Elkhart Model Railroad Club. Tonight we're at the club itself and I'm going to show you how the technique that I use to make trees and we are doing another clinic at the club. Um, my technique, I've got, as you can see here, there's, there's, that's what I make right there. They're deciduous trees. I don't do the pine trees. The armatures that I use, I've got two of them. One is commercial and it's called the super trees. You can get those, you can get a box of them for, I don't remember how much it is, but um, get a box of those, that's not too bad. Uh, and then another form that I use are hydrangeas. These you can get out in bushes, people's yards, although if you cut them from somebody's yard, ask permission first. Don't just go cutting the bushes down. They might not like that. <laughs> but that's how, I, that's how I do my trees. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you here the different steps that I do on these hydrangeas. This is what they look like when they come out. I don't know if any, all of you can, can see it, but this is what they look like. This can be, a, it's a very tedious process. Um, something that you would want to do if you got some night you're know, watching a movie, listening to music or whatever, get these out and cut all these little leaves off. So I'll show you in a minute how I do that. Um, but just cut the leaves off and then it comes to this, which sometimes you have, I think you guys probably can't really see them. There's little seeds on here that are some of the flowers that didn't bloom. I cut those off too. So then in this next step, this is what it looks like before I, before we paint it. Um, I know I paint them, I like to paint them gray. You look at trees out in the real world, everybody, oh, paint it brown, paint it brown. To me, they look gray. So that's why I do gray ones. But what I'll use, and I do this out in the garage or somewhere very well ventilated, this first one here, I'll use what's called an earth brown. It's uh, the camouflage. Uh, you can get this at Walmart, Target, Meyer, wherever. Um, you just, so. However you want to do it. Yep, yeah. get, get them there. They're, they're not that expensive. What I'll do when I do paint them, in here, I'll put it in a clip like this and then just spray paint it. So that way you're not getting your hands dirty. Or if you want, you could put a pair of gloves on or something like that and, and do it that way. Um, so then once I get the earth brown on, I will do a gray, either a lighter gray or you got a, a Krylon that you can do. Now when I do these, what I'll do is I'm, I'm not going to do it in here because I don't want to, but I'll hold it about this far away, an arm's distance away, and just kind of turn it and spray it. And that way it slowly covers it, gets it gray like, uh, like you want it. You can do as much gray as you want, as little gray as you want. But it kind of gives two different colors there. So then, once I get that, I get to this point here, then that's when I will start doing the tree. Um, let me get a small one here, and I'll show you how I do it. I use, I like to use these, they're called scale, uh, super leaves from Scenic Express. I like to use those. Um, some people use ground foam. I just like the way these look. So I'll use those, excuse me, use those instead. But to do that, I'll spray it down with Kraft Bond or any spray adhesive. I like this stuff. You can get this at Meyer, uh, hobby stores, however you wanna, wherever you wanna get it. So let's do, we'll do a medium green here on this one. So what I do is I've got a little <coughs> tray set up here that I'll do it over a, either do it over a trash can or something like a box like this. 
and then I'll just spray the tree with adhesive. And then what I will do is I will get, sorry I forgot to get this ahead of time, I will get a little tray and I will just start sprinkling this on here. Now, it doesn't, you don't get a lot of it sometimes on that first try. You just, you build it up. Just like uh, sometimes with paint and stuff. And what you can do, once you do this, you can kind of use your fingers. That's why I like it in a container here. And usually when I do this, I try to stay away from the trunk. Because the trunk, you, obviously you don't have leaves on it. So I usually just try to stay along the edge, do that. So, and again, I'll just keep building it up in layers until you get it to where you like it. Sometimes you can roll it in there however you want to you want to do it to get it in there. I say this this takes it takes a little while sometimes to build it up and again this is the technique that I use. Um, I know if you go out there on on YouTube there's all kinds of videos out there uh, for people the way they do their stuff. Everybody does it different. And just keep building it up in layers or if you want to do an, an early spring maybe just to put a few of them on there so it all kind of depends on on what you're wanting to model same thing right that's here. a hydrangea or is that a super tree this is a hydrangea yeah this is <coughs> But you kind of you get the idea and you just keep going with it and uh, eventually you'll get to where you like it now probably probably got a little bit ahead of myself here what I should do to show you how I get to that point sometimes I'll get a box and get a container or, or something like that and for example, we use this one. I'm going to get my cheaters on here because it's hell getting old. But you got your little hydrangea here. And what I'll do is I'll just go along and start cutting these leaves off. And I say this this is the, the tedious part right here. But you get some very good looking armatures once you get done. You just cut them off a little at a time now hopefully sometimes uh, you might find a bug or two in there but <laughs> usually if you get it if you collect them in the winter time most of the bugs are gone but uh, but that's what I use I'll just use a little pair of scissors like this I got these at uh, at Meyer I think it was at Meyer something like that they're, they're not too expensive and you just keep cutting and cutting and cutting until you get to where you got them all off. Um, like I said, I, I think they make real good armatures. You've got a very good branch structure on it. And um, they look halfway decent. I mean, right here you've got some of them, like this one here and this one here are the hydrangeas. And you got these three are the super trees. So it mixes in good. It gives you a, a good variety of it. So the super trees, they look like this. And what I'll do with the super trees, the super trees aren't as sturdy as the hydrangeas. So what I like to do with the super trees is I take and I soak them in a solution. I use Mod Podge and it's a, I mix it in a, a container like this, a seven to one ratio seven parts uh, water to one part Mod Podge. Uh, I've got another container like this at home 
And what I'll do is I'll pour these in a bucket and then I'll stick the branches in a bucket. And that way I let them soak anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Depends on what I'm doing, uh, do it that way. So once I get that done, once they're soaked, then what I will do, I'll use this one as just an, an example. I've got some locking tweezers. Sometimes you'll get some of these super trees, they're, they'll bend. So what I'll do, I'll put the tweezers on and then I've got a rope that I hang across my shelves that's got clothespins on it. And I'll take the clothespins, I didn't bring any, but they're notched to where you can put them on that string. So what I'll do is I'll put it so that that notch is on that string and then put it on the tree here and then it holds it like that. Um, that way you let it dry overnight. Sometimes they'll straighten out, sometimes they won't. I know on Super Tree's website, they do show another technique to where you can use a soldering iron, a hot soldering iron, to get in there to, to it heats it and then you can bend it back. But with the Super Trees, you have to be careful because these are very, very flammable. So you want to be careful on that. So then once I do that, then I'll get to this point here where I paint it. It's just like the same thing with the, the hydrangeas. I'll take and I'll paint it, get it, do the, it's called earth brown is the first one. And then I do the gray and uh, it kind of gives it a grayish tone to it. I still, I'm, I'm still playing with it. Um, I think sometimes they're, it's a little bit too dark, but that's the way I do it. So um, using, you could, you could probably use an airbrush if you wanted to, but I know some of those paints get very expensive. So that's why I use the store-bought stuff, the rattle cans. Um, but uh, with this, same way, I'll do just like uh, I did with the hydrangea. Take and spray it down. And then I'll kind of tip it up a little bit and come down from the top because a lot of your leaves, they're, they're not on the bottom, they're always on the top. So you just do them like that. These do, I, I like the super trees. They, they, they look pretty realistic, but I like the hydrangeas too. It's, it's a good way, good cheap way, I guess you want to say, to, to not have to worry about them. You get, get, get a bunch of them. And again, same thing, just Build it up in layers. So, okay, let's we'll say that one's pretty good. So I like that. Now, what I what I'll do, and it's another technique that I do. Once I get to this spot, again. Going to Meyer or Walmart or wherever, I'll get some Aquanet. It's cheap and this stuff is strong. It will hold. So what I will do is once I get it to where I like it, I just spray it down and seal it. And then you can set that in there and let that dry. It's really cool. Another thing that I have I've just started experimenting with with the hydrangeas is putting polyfiber on here. Um, polyfiber is just you can get a big bag of it at any of the hobby stores. It's just pillow fill is, is all it is. So what I will do with that, what I did with this one here, I took the spray adhesive 
and I sprayed it on there and then I took a little chunk of that polyfoam and just teased it, opened it up and then put it on there. Now it's white when you put it on, at least the, the ones, the stuff that I had. So what I did is the same thing I did when I do the uh, painting. I just shoot it with the brown, do it with the gray, and then now that we're doing this, let's see turns how out. this turns out. And that kind of, you can get a lot more on there. And that's more of a thicker tree. So you could have a different uh, different looking tree. Wow, that's nice. Looks like Spanish moss. Yeah, yeah. It does. So you gave him an idea. But and there again, just uh, very slightly. And when you're done, seal it with the hairspray. Ladies used to use this stuff for the beehives. Yeah, you got that right. So that's what that one looks like. So it adds a little different variety. As I said, once you once you get going, it's a fairly quick process. the The hardest thing is getting to that point, especially with the hydrangeas. Those are they can be a little time consuming. So what I've done is I've gotten a, a bunch that I've made ahead of time and then when I get done with them or you know when I'm ready to do it then I've got several of them where I can make a bunch of trees on there. Get something that you like that works for you um, and, and have at it. It's it's not that hard it's just time consuming getting it to this point that's that's the main thing. But, uh, other than that that's how I do my trees. Any questions? I'm Steve Story from the Elkhart Model Railroad Club, and this was the clinic at the club on how to make trees. Thanks.